live from Ellsbury Street in Fall River. It's Spindle City Straight Talk. And I'm CJ Ferry. And I'm Chip. And it's great to be live, and we hope you're watching. We have an interesting show, uh, as you've probably been following along. Um, the city has started a recall on the mayor. Uh, they had a meeting on Monday, and a lot of people were present, about 115, contrary to the reports of local media. And uh, they're ready to move forward, and I believe that's going to be happening very shortly. And uh, this is going to be a very interesting time because, you know, Chip and I have been called anti-Semites by the mayor. We've also been told that we're not credible. Chip, how do you feel about that? Well, number one, let me let me begin by, I know the mayor always watches our show, and we're live, so it's even better today. Exactly. So let me explain something. Uh, you better look up malapropism because that's what you're a master at. Uh, Anti-Semitic, you said our comments were anti-Semitic. Uh, you would have to be Jewish for that to be true, <laughs> because anti-Semitic means you're anti-Jewish. And, uh, and because your comparison of Hitler, the greatest anti-Semite in the 20th century, really is totally shows your, don't please, if you're going to use a word, at least know what it means. Because, you know, I mean, don't call us anti-Semitic, or we, call, we called you, or actually we didn't call you, but somebody, I guess, made a comparison to Adolf Hitler. And it wasn't about uh, his, his feelings about any group, which he was against virtually anybody but the Aryans, uh, but about your management style, the fact that you don't care about the people, you never have cared about the people. So number one, call us anything you want, but as long as you watch, we don't care. That's it. And I'll tell you right now, Mr. Mayor, uh, I called you King George III, and I equated you to King George III, and you know what? You are King George III. And the people of Fall River are revolting. In that period of time, when we were fighting King George III, it was the Boston Tea Party. Now we're having the Fall River Bag Party. And you know what, Mr. Mayor? I will call you something. And I will call you it here on the air. And if you want to file a criminal complaint against me for annoying or harassing you, okay, please feel free to do so. Because this is ridiculous. you got to have a thick skin. So, Mr. Mayor, you are a liar, and I will prove it now with the video. And I'd like our control room to please air the video of the mayor on Pays Your Throw. Pays Your Throw will not work in an urban community like the city of Fall River. Plus, we do not want to see another fee levied on our citizens. Not only did you lie about Pays Your Throw, Mr. Mayor, you went and you started and declared war on the people of Fall River, on the businesses in Fall River, and instructed your Board of Health to pass a regulation that is going to inflict more fees on businesses. So when we can't attract the business, Mr. Mayor, it's your fault. It's your fault. And, you know, we had a lovely meeting about at that Board of Health meeting, and it actually ran a long time. And it's amazing at the professionalism of your corporate counsel. Elizabeth Souza, your professionalism is unbelievable. Chip called you out when you had case law. Well, you had case law on Dominion, as, as Chip said. Chip, I mean, what was your response to that? I mean, that was craziness. Yeah, I, I, but first, let me, let me thank all the people who showed up. The council chambers were, were packed. There wasn't a seat available in the council chamber. And the people who spoke spoke from the heart they showed it, their dismay at the situation we have and even though the chamber of commerce in addition to the people of fall river said that they don't feel that the board of health was the appropriate venue it should be in front of the council of course an appointed board is going to go is going to run it through there will be legal challenges to this uh, the problem is that hey we got our message through. The city council was there. They saw a packed chamber of angry citizens, and this is what we want. We want people to become involved, engaged in government, because the only way we're going to change Fall River is if we change it together. I agree. And, you know, it's very interesting to see the professionalism of our corporate council, and I think we're going to go to that video now showing how our corporate council handles people who don't agree with her. Are you well aware that at least one of your members was looking into having the Board of Health look into implementing? No, there, there were there were three counselors who voted for this uh, for this uh, resolution. It didn't pass. I understand that. I have it right here. But nonetheless, it was discussed. It wasn't discussed. Why the heck? Why don't know what happened? It was Go ahead. Go ahead. Deep breath. Deep breath. Go ahead. Take it. No, let her take it because she's lying. Go ahead. I'm not lying. You're 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 lying. You're
right here. Attorney okay. Susan T. Pearl, D. July 15th, granted leave to withdraw. Be it resolved that the Board of Health consider implementing rules, regulations, fees for private trash haulers as soon as possible. How am I lying? I'm reading right from a document. I'm going to tell you why you're lying. Because number one, that resolution came forward. That resolution came up. Councilor Pelletier gave motion leave to withdraw. Councilor Rigo gave it a second, and we voted on it. So you mean to tell me that Corporation Council takes resolutions from this council that were given leave to withdraw and moves with that? You're Please. saying you had you're way out of order. Said, you're saying you're way you out of order. I had do. no I idea. idea. <laughs> Thank you. Isn't that lovely? What a sign. The fickle finger of fate, as you call it. Amazing. <laughs> what a great corporate council we have. Well, they've already begun the spin on it. They said she was scratching, and you know, of course. everybody has their own little muscle memory to scratch. I prefer to do it this way, but you know something? I've tried this, you know, and you know. I, I kind of like it, <laughs> you know. Maybe I'll start scratching that way too. Yeah, I mean, especially at the city council meetings yeah. and at, at meetings of the city. So, uh, but obviously, I mean, the the entire premise of that discussion. This this administration uses any feeble, pathetic excuse to run with something. Now they're going to say that because they discussed something, even though the motion, apparently, as usual, they don't know parliamentary procedure. The motion was withdrawn, which right. means it, right. it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. It's gone. It, it, right. it, it's like you and I talking about something, and we decide, okay, we're not going to do that. Well, we don't do it. But now Corporation Council is going to use something that's discussed, even in passing, as the reason a city will push a program that will put a financial burden on every single taxpayer and every single business that's in this community. It is absolutely deplorable. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, the worst part about this, and, and it just keeps getting worse and worse, is part of this regulation says that every single trash hauler has to collect the trash on the same day that the city of Fall River collects it. All I can picture is five or six trash hauling trucks lined up back to back going down the streets to not be in violation of the regulation so traffic won't move and this is being enacted to to maintain the safety and tranquility of the neighborhood sounds to me like it's going to maintain accidents and more noise and it's ridiculous because we now live in a gated community here in fall river because no trash can be on the street unless king george says so so i mean this is the way it is um, and, and it's just wrong. It's absolutely wrong. I ask every person that's watching this show today, watching it on YouTube or whatever, call the mayor's office, 508-324-2600, and tell King George, stop this insanity. You really need to, because this is absolutely ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Flood, flood, flood the switchboard. It's unbelievable. As it is, if you call the City Hall main number, you got to listen to him. Hi, this is Mayor Will Flanagan. I mean... I don't like the, the system, but this is what we have. And this is the system we are fighting. We are fighting it as citizens of Fall River. We have a broadcast yesterday to prove that our detractors in Fall River, uh, mainly being the administration, are presenting lies. The Herald News and WSAR went into a news blackout of what happened yesterday. The city hall chamber was full of protesters. Signs everywhere. Signs everywhere on this issue. Neighborhood association leaders turned around and said, get these signs out of here. You're disrespectful. They're not being disrespectful. They're exercising their freedom of speech. Their right under the Constitution. Oh, wait, we don't have one of those, do we? Not here in Fall River. No, we no. don't. I'm telling you. And, you know, the, the other, you know, the other major issue here is, and you brought this up about the uh, seemingly blackout. Uh, I don't. I didn't see an article today in the paper, but I did see uh, they resurrected another article that that obviously dealt with the first recall, which I was involved in. You was involved, in. and again, um, they they made they 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 they, were, they had some innuendo that said that we were perjurious and we did something illegal. And I know. C.J. Ferry is very, very, very 
particular about abiding by the law when he acts in his capacity as a notary public. That article basically was saying that there were perjurous statements and some of these things were signed erroneously. So live from the RIV, <laughs> I'm going to challenge the mayor because you, you, got this, you got this diversionary article to try to take the focus off the fact that we had 200 plus angry citizens in the city, in the city council chamber and you implied that we did something wrong and we were guilty of perjury. So I am challenging you today, resurrect that investigation because I am going to tell you, everybody watching and everybody that watches on YouTube, that the petition that was submitted, there were two notaries used. One was C.J. Ferry, and I witnessed all the signatures being signed that C.J. took, and he will go, and I'm sure he will defend himself. The, the signatures in question were taken by a notary who was commissioned by your new second best girl pal, the city administrator, Kathy Ann Viveris. So if you want to talk about who committed perjury, walk across the hall and tell your, tell your city administrator to call her son. This is amazing, you know. And the funny thing is, part of yesterday's Board of Health meeting, Liz stood on the law. She stood on the law and she said, the law says you shall, you shall, you shall. She said it over and over and over again. Well, Liz, the recall law doesn't say you may. The recall law doesn't say you can. The recall law says that the city clerk shall, shall, shall issue the petitions requested by the signers. It does not say that corporate counsel will have the right or shall have the right or may have the right to accept the petition. It does not anywhere in the law say that corporate counsel can in any way, shape or form be involved. That is legal malpractice. And that is what you did. And but you're protected by the law because you don't carry mal uh, legal malpractice insurance. And according to the Board of Bar Overseers, you are protected because you are hired by the mayor. You are hired by the mayor. You don't work for the people. Well, I think the mayor then should be paying you out of his pocket. Well, I guess you're not really a lawyer. You're a political operative. But the fact is, as CJ said, the law is very probably it's really one of the simplest laws you could ever read it's under the special acts of 1980 you can look it up um, the fact is it's very simple it says that if 10 taxpayers submit a request to recall the mayor as CJ said that the city clerk shall issue petitions it doesn't say that they have to be notarized so number one your allegation that there was perjury there because number one you required those signatures to be notarized, even though show me in the law where it says they have to be notarized. It, it's not there. Show me where the law department reviews it. The law simply states 10 taxpayers. The way it works, or the way it's supposed to work, until you and your law department obstruct the citizens' rights to exercise their right under a statute, is we give the city clerk the petition. She then sends it to the election, the Board of Elections to certify that, in fact, the people who sign that petition are registered voters. And when that certification is complete, the law states very, very clearly, she shall issue petitions. You commented in the paper that you were following the law. You are not following the law. You are using the law. You are manipulating the law to obstruct the citizens so you can do what all governments do when they have problems. Use the taxpayers' money against them to tie them up in court and say, well, you can't fight City Hall because we don't have the money. It doesn't mean we were right. We were right two years ago when we initiated that petition. And now the rest of the public 
is beginning to realize and they're taking a close look and the time has come again so let's see you try this again and i i advise everyone in the general public to go online go to mass general laws you have to look at a special section the special acts of 1980 and i don't have it with chapter me. 292 292 i believe it's 292 or 282 is one of the yeah. other ones yeah right. it's, it's two chats but 282 292 uh because one is when the initials and they change they had, but those are the acts read them read them and you don't have to be a lawyer well i shouldn't say that because actually we've just seen what some people that actually pass the bar are capable of doing <laughs> so uh but i i think all you have to do is is have maybe a, a you know a 12th grade or an 11th grade reading comprehension level and you can figure this law out it's not one of those laws where you read it and you go holy what is this i can't make hides it you know head of, heads or tails of this so you know with that you know let's get back to yesterday because i can tell you in all my years of dealing with the city council in politics i have never been never seen anything like it never been so happy to see the citizens band together make their voice heard and remind the board of health and everybody else in that building the city councilors who all looked like a bunch of deer in the headlights <laughs> uh that that building is our house it's not yours it's our house you are our agents and at all times answerable to us and it was great to see and the city councilors were put on notice that if you don't listen to the people you're next in the crosshairs and there's no question about it i'm telling you i had a conversation with tom corey chairman of the board of health first off there was not three members of the board there there were only two i don't know what constitute a, constitutes a quorum for the board but obviously it passed unanimously on the members that were present meaning tom corey and uh dr weed uh dr weed we know is a political um hack uh his job is dependent on doing whatever the mayor says uh, so much so that he has an office in city hall i don't know what kind of doctor he is um but uh you know mr valancourt also uh, you know another person that who is the agent uh shows made sure he showed how effective uh the board of health is because when they named uh allison the city clerk to be the uh burial agent for the city they screwed up they left out primary burial agent so they had to bring it back to get that approved and then they approved a variance for a septic system because it was three feet from the water table instead of four feet. So, uh, you know, I don't know who's buying this house, but uh, just remember that you don't have a lot of room between your feces and your drinking water. <laughs> Again, thank you, Board of Health. But the big thing is that I had the conversation with Tom Corey, who up until this point I had a great deal of respect for. And this was prior to the Board of Health meeting. And I said to him, you do realize that there are taxpayers ready to go forward to bring suit against the Board of Health in the city. I said, and from what we understand, the city council is empowered to override your decision. Well, we'll have to see. Uh, we'll have to see what the courts decide, which tells me and told everyone with an earshot that this was futile. Don't come in and talk to us, because guess what? We already made our decision. The decision was made. And even this morning, people were out in front of Standard Pharmacy on East Main Street, letting him know notes were being plastered on the doors. People were, were walking around picketing that we don't want you. We don't want you. And now, Tom, I hope and pray that the people of Fall River let you know that your actions were anti-citizen anti-fall river and anti-people and that you did not care for the wishes and will of the citizens and by doing that you have placed your own reputation and your own business in jeopardy because people may indeed boycott you and if they do i applaud them and as i said at last night's meeting uh with responsibility, which the Board of Health has, come li comes liability. 
The liability is yours for your actions. Obviously, we knew it was, uh, it, it, it was preordained that it was going to pass. You have a board full of appointees who serve at the pleasure of the mayor. If they vote to do the right thing, they no longer have a position. And when a new mayor comes in, they're gone. So they have to do everything this mayor says. But it wasn't futile because we were allowed to sh give the city council a preview of coming attractions and tell everybody, and you're right, CJ, even though not only the citizens, and you can say, well, you know, the citizens uh, are just, you know, they're, they're not really that attuned to what's going on. Well, the Chamber of Commerce made a presentation, and they said in that presentation that motion should be tabled, that this, this action should be tabled, that they have it on legal authority that the city council should handle this. Well, actually, I have been in contact with the same lawyer that the, that the Chamber of Commerce is going to hire. Uh, he is a, you know, he is pretty well respected in his field. And he told me yesterday on the phone that the city council, as the legislative body in the city of Fall River, in this particular instance, has the right to override the mayor and the Board of Health, because they are, in fact, the people who, who are fiduciarily responsible for the city's spending. So in spite of the fact that the city council asked them to table, I asked them to table it and allow the city council and the people and allow them as a board to examine other legal opinions, they decided to take the legal opinion of the city corporation council, who to my knowledge has never rendered an opinion that ever stood up in court. As a matter of fact, I don't know how many cases she's actually had in court. She hires somebody else to do all the work. Well, I know that, <laughs> I know even in conjunction with the people she hired, I guess she hires, I, the old adage, tell me who you walk with and I'll tell you who you are, is, is accurate because apparently they spent 115 grand trying to, trying to reverse the dominion and that went down in flames. So her case law, you know, that's the problem with people. Uh, you know, it, it, they think that the, the city council acts like the Corporation Council is the Supreme Court of the United States. When they render a legal opinion, it's just that. It's an opinion. And opinions are like anal sphincters. Everybody <laughs> has them. And they all stink. And, and it, some of them work better than others. But the fact is that it's a legal opinion. Right. And in fact, the only, the only people who have jurisdiction to determine if a legal opinion is correct is the court. And some of it ends up in the Supreme Judicial Court of Massachusetts or the Supreme Court of the United States. You know, I don't know where these people thought that the court, because the Corporation Council renders an opinion that this is carved in stone. This is why Fall River over the, over the years has lost so many lawsuits. The majority of lawsuits that have been filed against the city have been won because of the fact that our council and our mayors, you know, forget the fact that these are just political cronies that they hired, and it's their job not to render an, an unbiased legal opinion based on an interpretation of the law. They're there to release an opinion that buttresses the city's arguments. This is true, this is true. You know, um it's just very interesting to see, but uh, you said something earlier in the show, which coming up towards the end of the show, I want to say, and I'm going to make it very clear. Um, the revolution has begun in Fall River. The people will no longer tolerate any more BS. The horse hockey stops now. We saw it in the faces of the city council. We've seen it in the faces of the people at this Board of Health meeting. When they saw that it was all bull, and that it was being shoveled upon them deeper than Paul Schmidt has on his farm, I'll tell you now, they all got up in unison and marched out and said, table this, no pay as you throw, and they made it perfectly clear. The city is so tight on money that they took money out of the Fall River Police Department's overtime budget to have six police officers, four in uniform and two in plain clothes, going through the crowd because reports were made that they were going to 
do vandalism and haul trash in City Hall, and et cetera, et cetera, which was all fake. This was a peaceful demonstration that happened yesterday. I appreciate what those police officers did, and I have to give you all kudos. You were all professional, and you acted with professional status, and you made sure that people were, were treated with respect, and you did your jobs appropriately. So, a, you know, a great big hands to you guys because you did a wonderful job yesterday. But every one of you city councilors that were there, and even the one who decided he wasn't going to show up, are you next? Are you next? Well, I, I'm not sure about them being on overtime, CJ, because I think I asked one of them, and he said he was in a, uh, some special unit, and he'd been a, he had been assigned there. But regardless of that, they were very, they were very professional. Uh, they did a great job, and I think they understood. But, you know, as you said, the message has been sent. People are fed up. It's just one thing after another. Earlier in the evening, city council of... Pat Rock, I mean, Pat Casey, <laughs> uh, was actually down there fighting with our state rep, saying that it was okay to put more low-income housing in the South End because the mayor wants this and Fiola wants this. It's like, really? And then she made the statement that there are no poor people basically in the South End. They're all in the Flint. Well, guess what, Pat? Uh, look around the city. Almost the entire city's poor people. We have 23% of the people living below the poverty level. We, we, the average household income is half that of the state average. Guess what? We're tired of this. We're tired of every time we turn around, we're going to charge you for sidewalk repairs. You will be answerable. You will be answerable. The, you, we're getting bigger and stronger and more involved with every single day that goes by. And we are coming after every single politician who doesn't remember that you are our agents and you do what we want, not what you and a bunch of political hacks have decided is in the best interest of their pocketbooks. So let's see. I live in a wealthy neighborhood, I guess. It sounds that way because, or, or at least a middle class neighborhood, because they all live up the Flint. In your neighborhood, how poor are you? Oh, <laughs> hey, look, I live in a Flint. I'm, I am poor. I mean, you know, and I mean, after they get through with me, I will be destitute. <laughs> You're going to live in a cardboard box on the street? Wait, you can only put it on the day they collect the trash. <laughs> well, I may have to move to let the trucks come by. <laughs> exactly. But, since they'll all be on the street at the same time. I know, really. But uh, this, is, this is what we've come down to, people. This is what we've come down to. Elected politicians which don't even want to respect our rights and our wishes. Um, I do have one final comment. Um, it's come to my attention today that Joe Camaro was upset with some of the comments I made outside of the city council chamber. This isn't personal, Joe. This is not personal at all, okay? My comments in the outside of the, the city chamber, and I've filed formal complaints about it, is that you do not, you do not follow Cushing's rules. You make your comments from the podium. You're supposed to resign your seat. And with that, I yield. And thank you, people of Fall River, and thank you, and all our shows will now be live Wednesdays and Fridays. Remember, live from the Riv, it's Spindle City Straight Talk, and tonight we got a great new show on, airing at 1 a.m. You're going to love it, believe me, it will set the house on fire. <laughs>